Hey folks, my name is Gary Daly and I am America's Deck Builder. We're here at a lumber yard in Simpsonville, South Carolina, where I want to show you a bit about Green Bay Decking's fascia board. This can be used with any of Green Bay Decking's decking products. Uh, we're going to talk about installation. I'm going to throw a couple pieces on uh, and there are a couple of different ways we can install this. Um, the basic uh, installation requirements are that we get three screws every 12 inches unless we're ripping this to six inches or less and then we only need two screws every 12 inches. You can see that I've prepped these boards with screws so I can use one screw to hold it while I'm securing it with another. Um, on this outside corner I have a 45 here and I've got the other piece to a 45. I want to bring those tight together. Um, also I can make trim pieces to cover if they don't fit real tight. On an inside corner, we don't need to cut 45s like that because as I bring these two pieces one over the other, it creates the illusion of a 45. Okay, when we're installing the fascia, we want to use a one and a half inch trim head screw. And just like with the uh, duck's back and uh, eye deck decking products, we want to make sure that the screw doesn't have a reverse thread up here. It needs to have a clean shaft. Otherwise, it's going to clean too big of a hole and that head isn't going to grab. So let's go ahead and put this first board on. Now I want to feel in here, I want to make sure the inside of this cut is just past the corner so I can get a nice tight seam there. And then while I've got it held here, now that it's held in place, I just want to check this. That's just where I want it to be. So now I'm going to come around the other side and bring the other board in. And what I want to do when I, when I put together a seam real tight like this, so I want to start my screws at the seam and work my way over, work my way back that way to avoid any buckling. I don't want to start at one end, do the other end, and then come in and do the middle. Start at one end and work my way over. Okay, I've installed my first piece of fascia. I've driven the screws, three every 12 inches, and then I tapped the heads with a hammer just to close the seams, to close the, uh, the screw holes. I'll show you a little bit more on this one as we install it. Follow along. Okay, I've installed the two pieces of fascia tight on the corner, as tight as I could get it. And as you can see, there's a little bit of imperfection here. I'm using an existing structure in a lumber yard, so it's not my work, it's not perfect. Uh, in order to bring this into acceptable standards, I can just hit this with a belt sander, um, and if I do it in the direction of the grain, it's gonna look continuous, it's gonna look real nice when I'm finished. Our next piece is an inside corner. And the one thing we don't wanna do is lock this in. We don't wanna lock in an inside corner for fear of it buckling later. We need to leave a little bit of space for expansion. And so I want to bring this board up and leave perhaps a quarter inch, three sixteenths of an inch here. But I don't want to see that wood back there. So what I typically do, and I don't have any with me, so I'll just tell you, is I take a little wood stain. Um, stain that wood back there, pull this up into place, and if you use a dark enough stain, anything as dark as or darker than the, the fascia that we're using, you're not going to see that wood. You're not even going to know there's a gap there. So, since we're not locked in on the outside corner, I can start at any point on the board and work in two directions. As long as I don't screw the center and then the outside and then come in. If I start here, I can work out and then out that way or I could start at one end and work across. I just don't want to trap a buckle in there. Okay, so to finish this fascia project, I've created a couple optional trim pieces, and these are just a sample of what you can create on your own. This one I call the bridge, and this one, yep, the corner. The bridge is gonna bridge the gap on a butt joint like this, where we don't wanna bring those boards tight up against each other because we have to allow for variations in expansion and contraction with variations in temperature. So I've created a bridge, just cut it out of an old piece of tongue and groove. I put big hunky screws in here so that I can be sure 
that my fasteners aren't going into the trim board but are going in the gap. You can use stainless finish screws or the fastener of your choice. The bottom line is we don't want to attach this to this. We want to make sure that our fasteners go in into the wood. Another option for the butt joint would be, as I explained in the inside corner, you could take some dark wood stain and stain that wood back there, leave the gap, and it's almost unnoticeable if you get the right color stain. Over here on the corner, we're going to take our corner trim, put it on here, attach it with a couple stainless trim nails, happy day. Okay, now that we've established how to install fascia under a perimeter strip, we're going to look at another option. We like the fascia under the perimeter strip because it allows water to roll out over rather than any possibility of anything getting trapped here in. But if you're going to do it this way, here's how. So we've cut our pieces to length and you can see I've started some screws. We want you to use screws on the fascia because finished nails just aren't going to give us that holding power, the, the uh, resistance to withdrawal that we need. So finished screws are the way to go. Now I've got this piece just a hair short of the corner and I've got a screw here to hold it. We're going to bring it up so that it's flush with the top. And you can see that we've cut this, this perimeter flush with our uh, rim joist. I'm going to adjust my height and lock it in over here. Now, just like with the under perimeter fascia, we still want to lock it in from one end to the other. We never want to go lock the ends in and then screw in the middle. So we always want to start at one end and work toward the other end with our screws. And that'll decrease the possibility of any buckling later. Okay, I've cut my 45. I've installed this piece of fascia. I've got a 45 on the other side. I'm going to pull it up and put it in place. And because it's screaming hot here in Greenville today, I'm going to pull this tight because I don't have any concerns about expanding anymore. However, as I install this, I have to think about down the road when it gets cooler, this stuff is going to contract and this gap is going to open up a little bit. So it might not be a bad idea to hit this back here with a little bit of wood stain. So if it does get exposed, it's not jumping out in your face. So again, if this doesn't fit real tight, I can come back with a belt sander, just a little, uh, 120 and bring this down and it'll look real nice. Okay, we've installed our outside corner. Now I want to talk a bit about the inside corner. Uh, we don't have to cut these out of 45 because we've got one overlap in the other and it gives us the appearance of a 45. Uh, but I do want to talk also about uh, screw placement, fastener placement. With any fascia board, when you're installing it up against the end of our deck board cuts like this, um, there's the potential for debris, uh, leaves and seeds and other stuff to get down in there, absorb moisture, freeze, and push the board out. So we want to make sure we get our fasteners as close to the top as possible to uh, eliminate that possibility or at least to de decrease it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place this board. Now because it's really hot where we're working, again, I don't need to introduce a gap there. Um, as the temperatures decrease, this stuff is going to contract a bit. The boards will pull back a little bit. That possibility is there. So before I go ahead and screw this in, typically I would just put a little bit of dark wood stain back there. So I'm going to go ahead, bring this corner in tight and secure it. Okay, we've got all our boards put in place. To finish this off, I just want to brush the waste off the top of the screws here. And I'm going to take a hammer, hit it nice and flat. And we've got a nice finish. Okay, so in this segment, we've covered fascia installation underneath a perimeter strip, fascia installation without a perimeter strip. And, uh, and either way you do it, if you do it right, you're going to end up with a nice finished product. In Simpsonville, South Carolina, I'm Gary Daly, and I am America's Deck Builder.